A message like the Koan triggers questions about the one who sent it and its content. Indeed, understanding the language of the holy book can seem daunting, but its translations are very much an interpretation of meanings and sometimes less. The divine message is really important, and you will find in this video some interesting concepts to help you stimulate your inquiry into the Arabic language. Linguistically, Arabic is derived from Aramaic, and before that from Semitic scripts. It belongs to the consonantal or abjad writing system, which includes Hebrew and Syriac. To better visualize Arabic characters, let's take a look at syllabary alphabets. Japanese or Korean have one character per sound. If you put them in a table with consonants on the side and vowels on the top, you will have a quick overview of all the possibilities. This is how such table looks like in Arabic. Consonants on the left side and vowels on the top. But the interesting aspect in Arabic is that each of these letters are symbols with a body of related concepts. In the Quran, connecting them defines a word. The Arabic letters weren't always that way. Arabic was very much only spoken before the Quran was revealed. Due to their nomadic nature, the Northern Arab tribes were exposed to a wide range of neighboring letter forms, which affected earlier Arabic. It is, it seems, a mix of Aramaic, Musnad and Nabataean scripts that gave birth to Jazm in the region of Al-Hijaz. It was a period where Mecca started becoming an important trade center and was called in the Quran Umm al qura the arrival of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was going to launch the efforts to formalize the Arabic scripts. Some of the earliest manuscripts, like this one, show the early characters used. With non-Arabs adhering to the growing religion of Islam, the script had to be reformed quickly. In the year 688, the famous Arab grammarian Abu Aswad al duwali introduced diacritics or Cheshkin. The writing continued to evolve during the centuries, to reach a point where there was a specific symbol configuration for each sound from the Quran. And this is quite important. It means that the Quran is indeed the standard by which the Arabic language functions. Some would contest this statement and say the Shu'ara or Arab poets from ancient times owned the language. Their Arabic eloquence gave them status, prestige to their tribes and literally enchanted the minds. But rhymes do not make a language clear. It is in a clear Arabic language. Nor does it make it a knowledge bearing one. And we certainly know that they say it is only a human being who teaches the Prophet. The tongue of the one they refer to is foreign, and this Quran is in a clear Arabic language. Nor does it precede the creation of man. The Most Merciful taught the Quran and created man. At different eras, other languages and writing systems evolved to fit the needs of their societies, especially in order to accommodate the integration of new terminologies for sciences, literature, and trade. But in the same time, it triggered the loss of mechanisms to trace back the meanings of all the texts and led to confusion. The specific sounds from the Quran imposed a standard to turn to for Arabic letters. Through diligent study of the Quran and the concepts around each letter, a set of rules has been established for building new vocabulary, making it a vehicle for continuity and knowledge conservation. Such characteristics are exactly what is needed for a book like the Quran. It joins flexibility and consistency, meanings and sounds, information and creative thought process. Now imagine a landscape. A 
a landscape where farmers farmer is seeding. The Quran states, Have you not considered how Allah presents an example, making a good word like a good tree, whose root is firmly fixed and its branches high in the sky? Like the first letter of a word, it begins at the roots where direction is given. It then starts growing and coming out from the ground as a transformative action. And finally it stands straight its branches to the sky with fruits hanging as the results of the entire process. At school we generally learned that there are 28 letters in Arabic. But if you take any Quran and check all the different characters, you would probably end up with 36 or 37 characters. That is because some characters are combinations of others. Listen to the sounds from the Quran and you would probably distinguish 29 or 30 letters without vowels. It is called in Arabic Makhraj al -huruf. It is how air forced out of the lungs through the vocal cords translates vibrations into the different sounds. Pronunciation associated with its rational is called in the Quran mantiq, like mantiq at And Solomon inherited David. He said, O oh people, we have been taught the language of birds and we have been given from all things. Indeed, this is evident bounty. The difference in the number of letters is due to the first letter, Alif, which is really two and a half sounds. It is composed of a Hamza, the little hand that looks like a calf, or the palm of the hand in Arabic, and a straight stick. This character is used for definite articles like the L in Arabic. It is not a med where the sound is prolonged, far, but they have similar forms. The Hamza can also be on its own, or with a letter denoting a different relation with other characters, and therefore a slight sound attached to it. From a symbolic perspective, it denotes governance over a different element. This is a disclaimer. The following minutes include a potential explanation for the reason the writing system applied to the Quran has evolved the way it had. Its path is definitely divine. In this area, Nur is translated as light. So believe in Allah and his messenger and the light we have revealed and Allah is all aware of what you do. Nur is in fact a polarized light, and what better than light to send a message across space? By observing a star, we can read the composition of its atmosphere, know its age, where it is heading, and much more. That is because every chemical element present around that star has a set of different shadows, when interacting with a source light behind it. Surat Furqan, which means separating, is just after Surat Nur, which is the 24th in the Quran. Have you not considered your Lord, how he extends the shadow, and if he willed, he could have made it stationary, then we made the sun for it an indication. The word med is the extension or spread of the shadow. Just change its vowels and it becomes midad, ink, or mudda, time. Shadows are black inked lines on a light spectrum, like a barcode for elements, hydrogen, oxygen, carbon. And every element of your periodic table are letters for building everything we see. Maybe Arabic sounds have a similar system. If this tongue is clear, Mubin, as the Quran says it to be, then the same root word, Bayan, is a structured approach to clarifying things. And he taught him eloquence, 
Bayan here is translated as eloquence. The sun and the moon are accounted for. 29.5 days in the moon cycle are your different shadows and, in fact, your letters. And four are your vowels. A, O, E, A. Multiply 29.5 by 4 and you do have 118 combinations or elements for your table. Of course, it is always possible to create out-of-lab letters for specific use. At an atomic level, nucleus and electrons are what interact with photons of light. To describe everything that is possible, the number of paired electrons in defined volumes called orbitals will tell us what the material is, or rather could be. These orbitals are grouped and organized in different shapes, a total of 19 possible subshells that are governed by configurations of eight electronic orders. In a nutshell, these are the combinations for describing everything that has a shadow. By revisiting the word med, shadows, are most often generated by the presence of electrons and could be characterized by the spread, period of time, and a specific signature or barcode. But when we humans communicate, we need more than descriptive tools. A little bit like evolving a writing system from pictographs to ideographs into logos. In the science of the Quran, two is attached to the idea of creation. Allah says in the Quran, and of all things we created two mates. Perhaps you will remember. And three is about transcending, moving from one side to the other. In a verse, Allah sends two prophets and then a third one to warn that retribution is coming. The children of Israel asked three questions to Moses about the cow before abiding. But mechanically as well, birds best penetrate the air in formation of at least three. The form of male genitals are adapted to transmit genetical messages. Three drill bits best get through materials. Color cones, blue, red, and green in your eyes get the light inside. And our entire 3D world is for transitioning to the next one. Thalatha, or three in Arabic, with the letter Tha and its closest letters, Ba and Th and Ta, are like a structural build or crystal. And Arabic words are generally built around three letters, with one or two bonds and three possible shapes for each letter. In nuclear words, each electron can cause one shadow. And in our model, each orbital of electrons could have three rather than two electrons. For this, we need to add two subshells in the H column, resulting in 29 different subshells, or letters, with 10 electronic orders, making for 118 potential orbitals. This is not for building everything, but for communicating about everything. The Quran, beyond its recitation, may not state how the writing system should be. But it does state the following. Indeed, it is we who sent down the Quran, and indeed, we will be its guardian. The order of all things does start with Allah, and it does end with Allah. And in between, little hands may contribute their own ways. I will leave you with the first letter. Alif is used in Anna, I, Enter, you for male, or Anti, you for female. The lower stick is like the spine, and the Hamza has control over the body nervous system.